This is called the Inniskill and Bombing, and it's two parts in reverse chronological order. The first part uh, is about the day of the bombing itself, and the second part is about that earlier day when my friend Bernard Lachlan and I made a very peaceful visit to the town. The bombing occurred on something called Remembrance Day, which is the same as our um, Memorial Day um, or Veterans Day or one of those um, which honored the, the war dead of all the wars. Remembrance Day, 1987. Showery with bright periods, said the forecast, the way it does so many days in Ireland. It's either showery with bright periods or bright with showery periods, you know, one of the take your pick. And indeed, the arrowy soft rain fell and the clouds parted more often than not above that watery parish. And the farmer walked in collarless from Derry Gore. The butcher left his awning snug against the lintel. Two boys forgot their caps on the orchard wall. Nobody looking at the sky or listening to the weather would ever have predicted that thunder would erupt before the lightning blow the whole end gable of St. Michael's out and bring the roof spars raining piecemeal down. Not the slow-tempered grocer gone open mouth with or without a cry as the windows roared. Not the stooped pharmacist red-faced with grief. Not the veteran of two world wars in all his ribbons scrabbling with his raw bare hands through the choking dust for anybody's heartbeat. Not the father wandering almost blindly, eyebrows seared from his face, who found his son still breathing, only to knock the tip of his stick against his daughter's wedding ring, her splintered hand upturned in the rubble, incarnadine as the fuchsia banking a rain-swept roadside. It's the earlier day before it happened. One afternoon, a friend from the falls and I drove out from Sligo into Enniskillen for a quiet drink among old lamps and mirrors. The glancing talk conspiratorial as wives at the half doors, silences freighted, lamplight pooled with sunlight on the polished bar, the street outside a cleared out control zone. Across the street and up the narrow stair, in a room with spring light swimming in the windows, fine as grace, lace and firm as Blake's engravings, the paintings of a dozen Irish wildflowers, one after one, hung cleanly on the wall. My friend, the country walker, botanizer reared in the gutted streets of West Belfast, called everyone by name from memory. Bogbean, Pipewort, Grass of Parnassus, Harebell looking so fragile it might tatter in a breeze, yet stubborn as the stone ones high on the capitals at Corkham Road. We came downstairs into the slant of evening and drove away in the unmolesting dark. As we left behind the small lights of the town, the voice at the wheel was naming constellations. Orion, Cassiopeia, where they wavered at first, then spread their nets of stars in the night wind. <laughs>